get into it, shall we? Here, there we go. Now, now we can see the beautifulness. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for coming back. This is Between the Ropes, episode four. So let's kick this thing off properly, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, tonight, the Dead on Dave Productions proudly brings to you its wrestling smack talk champion of the world dead on dave unfortunately i am riding solo today because um i basically i my weekend is completely crazy there's no way i'm going to be able to get this done in a proper time frame and my great tag team partner the one the only the man the myth the legend jeff huffman he is um seven hours behind me in the states and so sometimes it's hard to coordinate we have a time we usually do but unfortunately because of my weekend schedule which is kind of hectic uh, or it might be nothing it's just it's one of those uh, crazy weekends where you just don't know uh this was the best way that i can ensure there was a show this week which is the most important thing so i i wrote him on facebook he doesn't even know that i'm recording right now so hopefully you will not be too mad at me Mr. Huffman, you are the man. I appreciate everything you do, but I had to do a solo show this week. So that being said, what's going on, wrestling fans? How you doing this week? There's been, a, you know what? As much as I may have shit on Raw on the Raw review over at the Joe Cronin show on Spectrum Gaming six one seven. After rewatching Raw. It was a pretty good Raw. It was not all that horrible. It, you know, it, it's building to something. There's a lot of things building. There's a lot of storylines happening. And I think that it was heightened by what happened after Raw. And that's the first thing I want to talk about is Rusev taking the title off of Sheamus in the, uh, the network exclusive. Which, by the way, I think was an absolute brilliant idea on so many levels. So many levels. Look, I think they should do things like this more often. Hype a match for after Raw and SmackDown that is only on the network. Now, why is this smart? Why is this Why is this a good idea? Well, real simple. The first part of it is right now for this month, the network is free. So you're getting extra eyeballs onto the, onto the network, which is important, which is what they want to do. The, the, mo the more important thing is Raw and SmackDown are already free on, on network television. So they're... Yes, there's advertisements for the network, but Raw and SmackDown do not do much for the network other than those advertisements. Now, that being said, if on both Raw and SmackDown you are advertising throughout the show that there is a special high level, even if you only do this once a month or twice a month, you don't have to do it every week because it will get old, but if you advertise that there is a high profile match like a title change or not title change a title match or something that people really want to see and it's exclusively on the network well hot damn you got yourself a little bit of marketing right there don't you i think you do i think it was a smart idea and you know what the execution was good we had the play by play by the great joe cronin on the the match and he wasn't really happy with the 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 quality of the match after watching it I kind of have to disagree with him. I, I didn't mind the match. I didn't mind the match at all. These are just kind of how Sheamus matches kind of work. He's kind of plotting at this point. He's, But I, I felt that the match picked up at several times throughout. Uh, the length was good on it. Rusev, man, he, when this guy gets pushed, even though he does kind of look like Eugene, Remember the retarded wrestler Eugene? He kind of looks like Eugene, but with a tan and some muscles. But he does. He looks like he really does. But <laughs> when Rusev, and I don't mean getting pushed as far as higher up on the card. I mean getting pushed in matches. When he gets dragged in the deeper water, he really responds well. And he got dragged in the deeper water with Sheamus this week, and it was he responded really well. And the ending to that match was spectacular. Yes. Now, it's unfortunate that it seems every time uh, someone's in the accolade, they just pass out. No one's really tapping out, at least the bigger guys. I don't know if that's... A, if this would have been the first time they did that, it would have had a bigger impact. The Sheamus just passing out would have felt much bigger than it did. I, I feel they probably should have just had Sheamus tap out. I... 
you know, to have him tap because you're not protecting him at this point by having him pass out. Yeah, you can play though. He's a tough guy card, but we knew he's a tough guy. He's Irish. He likes to fight. He's, you know, that's what he is. We know this about Sheamus. It's not something that needed to be, be beat in when you're trying to do a title change. Now, presumably he's going to be having a, a title rematch at some point. I see more likely Rusev joining Team Authority at Survivor Series and subsequently Sheamus joining Team Cena. I think that makes a lot more sense. That way they don't have to give away uh, this rematch, which I think they could, if they build up properly, the rematch could be pretty friggin' special. I think the rematch could be a real special thing. And that's saying something because this title match was real special, I feel, uh, because of the circumstances, because it was... Uh, after Raw on the network. I feel that it was a little bit more special than a regular title change. And the fact that I, I think Sheamus needed to drop the belt, and he dropped the belt to the right guy. I think the, the stars just kind of lined up, and it made a lot of sense. So that's how I really feel what happened um, throughout with that. So moving on throughout the week, main event was good, solid as always. I mean, you know what you're going to get with main event. You know what you're going to get with NXT. NXT was really good. Um, even though it was taped, you know, and I knew what was happening because I read the spoilers on that because I'm impatient. We had, uh, Finn Balor, who is the formerly known as Prince DeWitt. He, or DeWitt, whatever you want to call him. He, uh, <laughs> he made his debut as, uh, Hideo Itami's tag team partner, which is friggin' awesome. And, of course, today, Otami was Kenta, better known as. And I couldn't remember his name last week on last week's episode, but he was Kenta. So now these two have formed together to take on the Ascension. All four of these guys should be up on the main roster relatively soon. That'll be really exciting. Uh, so NXT was, as always, the best wrestling program you're going to watch. If you just want wrestling and you just really want a great show, NXT is the show for you. It is the best wrestling program on television and it's unfortunate that it is only like an hour long it, it just it really feels more than it should be more than what it is and it's a really 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 good program if you ha are not watching it i think that's worth the network on its own um personally and uh, you know that's just my prerogative on it i feel that the network is worth that because of nxt and right now, there's a lot of good programming on the network that I... And I'm not trying to shill the network. I'm just trying to simply say um, why it's working for me, especially when it's free. Um, Countdown is one of my favorite friggin' shows. I love watching Countdown. I love the Monday Night Wars. Even though I gotta say, and since I'm kind of going through the week, and this was last week, I believe, anyway, but it doesn't matter. Um, the Rocks episode, God, that felt so pandering. It just didn't feel like it accomplished much. It really, I mean, like, I guess you can kind of make that case for every single episode, but man, the Rocks episode did not feel special to me at all. I mean, we didn't get to see a lot of things we haven't seen before, and some episodes have kind of felt that way, but, uh, I mean, it was a good highlight of the Rocks' success, but it really just felt like one of the, one of the early Rock DVDs. It didn't really feel special, and we didn't highlight as much as it probably should have, so that was unfortunate. But overall, you know, the the Monday Night Wars has been spectacular. Uh, this Rivalries is really good. The first two episodes have been on uh, Stone Cold and Vince McMahon. That's been really good. So I've been having a lot of fun watching these things, and that's on top of all the on-demand stuff and things like that. So right now is the time to check out uh, the, the network if you're not checking it out for the simple fact, at least go watch NXT because that's where you're going to get to watch it, and, that, and, and that's worth it on its own. So, uh, sorry for shilling the network, children. I just can't help it when I see the value there. Uh, people are still buying pay-per-views, and it freaking just blows my mind. We want, we as wrestling fans are always constantly bitching and complaining about how wrestling is dying and how it's falling out. We're killing it because we don't want to pay $10 a month for something that a lot of us grew up paying $50 or $30 or $40 a month for pay-per-views. You know, and now... You could just pay $10 a month and you're going to get the pay-per-view every month and all this extra content. And it's driving me nuts that more people aren't fucking, are, aren't subscribing for it. it. It just boggles my mind. Wrestling fans all over, and I don't see how it's not at least at a million. 
I mean, we're killing the company. We're killing the industry. And it has nothing to do with the product. People say, no, the wrestling industry is killing the product. And on some levels, they are. But there's enough value there to justify it. I mean, hell, all the people out there who are, are downloading illegal streams and stuff. Really? Really? At, at, there's no excuse for that anymore. There's no excuse for that anymore. There's no reasoning for it. $10 a month is, is, is okay, I, I'm going to say this, and maybe people are going to be mad. Oh, you don't know everybody's situation. $10 a month is doable for anybody. It really is, man. If, if you're an adult especially, maybe parents don't want to give their kids $10 a month, but almost every kid who's of wrestling age, they get themselves an allowance. You give it back to your parents, you get the friggin' network. What's the problem here? And for adults, if you can't afford $10 a month for something that you're passionate enough about, passionate enough about to steal a fucking stream, then you really have a problem. Then you need to analyze your priorities in life and see exactly what you're spending your money on. Because, you know, and I'm not trying to run you down for being cheap or anything like that. I'm trying to run you down for for not doing what should be done, and that's supporting the industry. Because if you're watching my show especially, then you're really fucking into wrestling. Then you love wrestling the way I do. And if you do, and you're not a network subscriber, well, fuck you then, okay? Fuck you then, because it pisses me off. Now, I've been wanting to rant like that on the network for a long time. Because, goddamn it, I love this industry, and I always have, and I always will. It's a lot of fun. It's provided me entertainment. And it's unfortunate my daughter does not get into it as much as I'd like her to. I'm hoping as she gets older, she'll watch more wrestling with me. Right now, she doesn't. She likes ponies and Barbies and bubble farts and stuff. I don't know. She's nine. What? What? Looms. She likes to make little plastic bracelets and shit. I mean, or, that's great. All right. Let's go watch somebody suplex somebody off a fucking cage. Oh, okay. <sighs> All right. So anyway... <laughs> <laughs> All of that leads us to SmackDown, which is the crux of this show, because that is what we do on the show. We review Friday Night SmackDown every single week. That's what we do here, and that's what I'm going to do now. So since I've gotten through my rant on the rest of the week, on the week that wasn't wrestling, which I, once again, will say I feel is pretty good, we can get into Friday Night SmackDown, where we got not one, but two steel cage matches. And I feel SmackDown was pretty friggin' strong this week uh, overall. It was a pretty damn good, pretty pretty good show. So let's start with the first uh, cell match, cage match, that kicked off the show. And that was for the tag team titles, the Usos and Golden Stardust. Now, I have previously stated that I am tired of the Usos and Golden Stardust. I've said this on multiple occasions. We've seen these matches before. They've done it. We've been there. It's happened. I'm an idiot because, my God, these two had a hell of a, these two teams had a hell of a cage match. It was a great cage match. It really was. It felt bigger. My only critique of it is it's in a fucking cage. Why are they making tags? Why is there a legal man? I don't understand that. Have all four go in the ring. I understand it's for television. It's for pacing. I get that. But in reality, it's fucking stupid. It makes no sense at all. We know there are no rules in cages. There's no disqualifications. There's no nothing. So even if they're forcing you to go to your to, to make tags, you can just fucking ignore it because it's a cage. You're not getting d disqualified. Fuck. Drives me crazy, but other than that, that's just a small critique. Other than that, it was a great match. It really was. The Golden Stardust, man, they are convincing me that these guys are one hell of a tag team and should be together for a long time and continue to have a long, sustained run. I'm hoping that the Ascension comes up. Yeah, I am an Ascension guy, by the way, because this tag team is impressive. If you haven't watched them down on NXT, I would highly recommend checking them out because they're a very good tag team um i really like to see a program with them and you know the usos could stick around i am not as um anti-uso as i may have been a week or two ago the usos are not going anywhere i don't see them splitting up so let's just let's see where this goes let's have a couple more uh, multiple tag team title defenses like three or four tag teams at once those are always fun 
uh, Los Matadores is in there now. They're the, the, they pinned Golden Stardust on Raw. So we have all this stuff going on where the tag team division is getting a little bit more exposure. And when you have a great match like we did on SmackDown for the titles, that just really puts a lot of emphasis on the importance of the tag team title. So I think it was a very successful match. It was a lot of fun. It was entertaining. And it felt a little more brutal, too. There were some good spots where, especially, man, I, I have to give props to Goldust yet again because he puts himself in position. God, the guy really knows how to work a ring. He was putting himself in position. He did this a few times there in the match where he really made the Usos crash and burn into the cage look better than it probably should have. All because of his ring positioning. Go back and watch the match. Watch how he positions himself to the ropes. And it's not just, oh, this is my spot. It's it's my mark. He knows exactly where he needs to be to make the moves feel a little bit more special. And that's that's something that is not done enough. In wrestling, so that's really exciting to see. Next up, uh, Cesaro came out and pleaded to Kane. And by the way, Kane started this segment out, and he gave one of the best promos I've ever seen out of Kane. He made the authority uh, seem scary. He made the authority seem actually evil. He made the authority and the 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 Cena alliance seem a bigger thing. That promo was very well done, and I'd like to see more of that out of Kane and less in-ring activity. We'll get into why that is a little bit later when I talk about the main event. But anyway, uh, Kane's talking about, you're either with us or against us. And Cesaro comes out, who's been getting just nothing but buried recently. Uh, So that was kind of weird to see him come out, and Kane kind of dismissed him as an afterthought and said, you're not the guy that I was expecting to come out, but you can have a match with the guy that I was expecting. And, of course, it's Ryback, who um, Ryback got dragged into deep waters with Cesaro in this match. I was expecting a little bit more of a squash, and it wasn't. They actually worked a match about five or six minutes, Cesaro, and maybe even a little bit longer. But it was a good, solid match. Very few uh, botches, which we're kind of getting used to seeing out of Ryback. But when you're in there with a guy like Cesaro, who is so technically sound and who does not make a lot of mistakes, you kind of expect these things. So it's kind of nice to see Ryback uh, being able to have that type of a match with Cesaro because now we know if you put him in there with the right guy. And maybe this has to do with his time off and maybe a little bit of extra training as well. Ryback might be ready for that next step that he was not ready for in the past. He might be now. I like what Ryback's doing, and I know I've been kind of touting the Ryback train since he's returned. I like Ryback. There's something about him. I think he's got great charisma. I like his look. I like everything about the guy. So it makes me happy to see him get these type of uh, of light shown upon him. So I think that'll if they continue to do that, properly his build is going to feel much more special so back to the match Ryback beats Cesaro with a nice shell shock uh, out of a uh, standing suplex that Cesaro was trying to counter with knees to Ryback's head and Ryback eventually turned into a shell shock that was a pretty cool uh, finishing spot and then Kane tried to come in and kind of recruit Ryback and Ryback just kind of walked out I like that Ryback's not going to join the authority because they just turned him face so it makes complete sense Uh, I enjoyed that R-Truth and Adam Rose, and my surprise of the night of how entertained I was during this match. A lot of comedy during the match. I like Adam Rose. A lot of people don't. I think the gimmick is going to the place where it needs to be a little bit darker. Because during the match, after some really funny comedy uh, that I felt was actually quite well done, uh, the bunny distracted Adam Rose accidentally. And cost him the match. And Rose attacks him after the match. And I, I enjoyed that. I, I thought that was a cool spot. And it's we're kind of seeing... They kept showing Adam Rose's face go light and then dark. Light and then dark. And um, I think if done right, this whole party gimmick, but in a darker sense... And Joe Cronin and I talked about this a, a while ago. Um, I think it could be done really well and have... Rose could be something with this type of gimmick. So I hope that continues. And that was cool. And this will also lead to the bunny being revealed. And it looks like they've gotten away from the Slater and Gator and bunny thing where the bunny was definitely going to be 
um, Darren Young. So now they can either build the bunny as a new star or they can use it as a returning way to bring back somebody from the past. So they, they have more options now. But I wouldn't mind if they went back to the Slater, Gainer, Gator, Dar, uh, Darren Young angle either. I kind of like that. I, I would have liked to have seen Darren Young be revealed as the bunny. But who knows? Who knows how that's going to work out? Uh, after that, Christian, the peep show. That was just out of nowhere, wasn't it? And Christian, we never see him anymore, you know, rarely. And now he's hosting the peep show. I guess if they want to make if they want to make that a weekly segment, I'm cool with that. But you can't just have Christian off camera, out of the ring, and then have him host the peep show out of nowhere and expect it to feel special. That being said, this one did feel special because of the promos cut by Dean Ambrose and then subsequently when Bray Wyatt interrupted him. Both promos were done magnificently. Dean Ambrose in particular once again delivers just this. You really question his sanity. The way he talks, he's got this macho man kind of undertone to him where it's just you're just waiting to say just embrace and feel the madness yeah you know you just kind of you're waiting for it he has this amazing ability to talk and connect and make people feel um uh feel what he's feeling and it's kind of cool to see so and then bray wyatt comes out and completely uh completely interrupts everything and does his thing and you know talks about how uh I'm sorry, I got completely distracted because my family is loud and annoying. Uh, <laughs> Bray Wyatt comes out and does his thing and talks. I, I forgot the entire promo. I'm completely lost now. Oh, my God. Anyway, Dean Ambrose goes, tries to attack Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt lights go out. Bray Wyatt comes out, and he's right behind Dean Ambrose. And that spot could have felt cheesy. It didn't feel that cheesy. And he just screamed, run, behind Dean Ambrose. That was kind of cool. I like where this feud is going. I think if it's built properly, it could be real special. So, uh, But I, I don't want every single feud that Wyatt has is just to be, join me. You know, I'm tired. We don't need to see. It's the third time already. I think it's only been three, but it might have even been more. But Kane, Daniel Bryan, and now... Dean Ambrose, you know, join me. Okay, great. I'm tired of that shit. So hopefully they'll find more creative ways to use Bray in the future. After that, we got our Divas match, uh, which wasn't terrible because as much as I hate Total Divas, uh, and not the show because I actually do watch the show, unfortunately. Uh, Don't judge me, bitches. Uh, I like... I hate Natalia and Tyson Kidd on the show. However, I like the dynamic that they're doing on on SmackDown and Raw in the ring. I, I like what they're doing. I, I For some reason, I'm connecting with it. And Natalia gets distracted by Tyson Kidd when Tyson Kidd tells her, Lock in the sharpshooter, Natty! And uh, she gets distracted and Summer Rae gets a, a victory. You know, it, was, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a good match. It wasn't a terrible match. But it feels like they're – hopefully they'll do something with Natalia and Tyson Kidd. If not, it's just – are they just going to keep stringing it along forever? I have no idea. So then it brings us to the main event, Kane and Ziggler. And I know I skipped over a couple of the promos with AJ and Bree, but, I mean, who gives a shit? I mean, they just, once again – uh, moved along the Bella's angle where you know she's using Brie to get what she wants and she attacked AJ Nikki her being Nikki attacks AJ we've seen it we know what's going on it's really blah 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 uh, the other you know speaking of the main event and, I, and I'm going to get to that in a second but Dolph Ziggler was in the main event and he had a promo right before it and once again Triple H comes talks to him and tells him Ziggler it's not too late it kind of makes me wonder if Ziggler might turn heel at some point, either before the match and join Team Authority or just completely fuck Cena over during the, the match at SummerSlam, they're leaving that inkling of doubt. And that's kind of what I've been talking about, how I like what they're doing as far as building these angles 
where it's not completely cut and dry what's going to happen. They're leaving, if you really look at what's happening, they're leaving possibilities of change, and I like that. They're leaving a little bit of open-endedness, and that's kind of fun. So getting into the main event, Kane, Dolph Ziggler. We've seen this match a bunch now, and this is in the steel cage, second cage match of the night. Probably should have felt more special, but because the first cage match was for the tag team titles, and simply Kane just can't do what he used to do. Ziggler had to do everything in this match, it seemed, and Kane just kind of plodded along and doing his thing. Ziggler was hanging himself on the friggin' door at the end and taking major bumps onto the cage. He was doing everything. Ziggler really worked his ass off to make this match watchable, and it was decent. It was not spectacular. I felt their second match that they had in this series where it was just a regular match, I felt that was the best of the of the series so far. However, it was a good match. It was a good main event. Uh, and it, it once again, just Ziggler, you just don't know what he's going to do. Because he gets to win the way he did, because, you know, Kane is seething, you know there's going to be more punishment. And I, fig- I figure at some point before Survivor Series, Ziggler is going to drop the title. I thought it was going to be to Rollins on Rob, but Randy saved him. I still feel that title change is going to happen. He's going to, and that's kind of what's either going to completely solidify him with Cena or make him turn on Cena and join the authority. Just kind of how I see it happening. And that would be interesting. So overall, I give, I give SmackDown, you know, I'm going to give SmackDown a seven. I'm going to rate SmackDown higher than I rated Raw this week. Because I really, maybe even a 7.5, because I was thoroughly entertained with SmackDown. And I think uh, some of that also has to do with they're only filling two hours instead of three, like Raw. And when you have to fill three, oh yeah, it gets a little hard. So, all right, uh, so that's the that's a SmackDown roundup. Let's get into a little bit of uh, rumors, shall we, uh, before we wrap this show up. Let's talk about a couple of things that are making their way around the wrestling world this week. So the the big news from last week was, was from how she looked on Raw from the last week, I should say. Uh, Stephanie might be pregnant. And if she is, the, the whole reason why Vince showed up and announced this angle of the authority losing power is to write her off the story while she's pregnant, which is, which is fine. This changes a lot of things potentially and that gets me to the first big rumor of the uh, of this week talking about the rock and triple h not being able to happen because of the rock's busy schedule coming up so if that's all true let's say let's let's just call it all true let's say stephanie is definitely pregnant let's say the rock is definitely not going to be able to wrestle uh, at WrestleMania because of Fast and Furious 7, all of these things, where does it leave WWE? There's two names. Two names, and they can use them any way that they want. I don't care. But two names need to be on their radar, and they need to do and say and promise whatever they have to to make it happen. One of those names is Stone Cold Steve Austin. You need to find a way to convince him. And he's been flipping, flopping back and forth on is he really getting ready to uh, is he really getting ready to come back? Is he really training hard? I'm smiling because my daughter just caught me because she's looking at her bag of chips because she knows that I ate some of them. Yes, I did. And what are you going to do about it? I'll pedigree you right through this table. I will pedigree you right through this table. I swear to God. <laughs> anyways um so is that actually going to happen with austin you have to make it happen austin triple h wrestlemania 31 i guess austin would be representing vince mcmahon in a power struggle angle it needs to happen it it is the match that can single-handedly save this card and i know it's still early to talk about how the card might be shaping up to be disappointed i'm simply looking at the talent or in this case, lack of big major stars that are going to be available. And there is a quite a big lack of major stars that are going to be available for it. So this match needs to happen. Absolutely must happen. The other name 
and might even be more important, not just for WrestleMania, but for the future, and I know that everybody's probably sick and tired of it, is now is the time. Get CM Punk back in the ring. It's almost been a year. Royal Rumble will mark a year since he's been gone. Let's figure this out. He's healthy. He's in a good mindset. Do what you got to do to make this happen, WWE. Get him back in there. And I'm going to say even something more bold. Fuck all the other shit. Fuck everything else that was supposed to happen with Cena and Rusev, whatever. Cena, CM Punk, WrestleMania 31. That's the match that needs to happen. Let's officially pass the torch. Let's show C- let's let CM Punk be the man that he's never really had a chance to be on his own. He always says he wants it. This is how it needs to happen. Maybe even Cena, Punk, Lesnar, triple threat. If you need to have Lesnar in a match. I know a lot of people feel that Lesnar needs to drop a belt to a younger guy to give somebody the rub. Let's just drop the belt to Punk and let Punk carry the roster. And then we could talk about a Cena heel turn or whatever else we want to talk about. That's never going to happen. We can at least entertain the possibility. But bringing Punk back in the picture, doing what you need to do to get Punk back into the scene is best for business for WrestleMania 31. So all these things that have been talked about uh, with stars that may or may not be at WrestleMania 31 changes so many things. And this storyline of the authority um, power struggle that could be coming up, because I see them losing at, at, at Survivor Series. You know, there's a bunch of things that are going around and this makes the most sense to me could i be wrong absolutely am i wrong probably so because it's better than plan b or c and that looks to be because hogan is working his magic dude working that magic brother you know trying to talk his way into a match with possibly sting or something but god damn it we don't need hogan with a retirement match at WrestleMania, we don't need to see it. Do not need to see it. And you know what? If they get desperate because of the lack of major stars, if there's no Rock, if there's no Batista, if, and it certainly looks like there's not going to be a Daniel Bryan, if something cracks with the Lesnar thing, there are so many possibilities. If all of these guys are not available, Hulk Hogan might look real enticing, and that should scare you because we don't need to see it. We don't need to see it. Raymond, Roman Reigns, here's another rumor. I'm kind of rambling at this point. But here's another rumor. Roman Reigns taking acting lessons. Fuck, thank God. Who was the genius who fucking made this happen? Give that guy a raise because, my God, that needed to happen. Jesus, man, Reigns sucks. They have built him so weakly during the time he's been out. His promos, his interviews they've been doing have made him look like such a big flabbity fucking vagina. It makes me sick. They could have used this time to... Look, if you're going to build him like a big flabbity pussy, just keep him off camera and have him make a surprise return as a fucking monster. Don't fucking do this bullshit where he's like... (laughs) <laughs> talking all soft and fucking sweet and being himself and not, you know, I hate that because his, his regular personality has not shown. He's not a rock. He's not a Shawn Michaels. He's not a Triple H. He's not a Ric Flair where you could just be yourself and turn up the volume. It doesn't look like he's one of those guys. So my God, please build Roman Reigns stronger because if you don't, that's going to be another star that will be absent. Because even if he is in a, in a big a big match at WrestleMania, nobody's going to give a shit because you haven't built him correctly, WWE. Jesus fucking Christ. The last thing I want to talk about is WWE using polls to determine what's going to happen next in WWE. The, apparently they got quite a reception to the Cruiserweights, the flight of the Cruiserweights uh, Monday Night Wars uh, episode. And a lot of people are kind of clamoring for the cruiserweights and the cruiserweight division to come back. And they did a poll. I don't. I didn't see the poll numbers. <laughs> I probably should have looked that up. I'm terrible at what I do. Uh, but that's a good question, kids. Should the cruiserweight division? 
be reintroduced to WWE? And if they do, should they create a new title? Should we have a roster? Should we get luchadors back? Should we do all? Th- Is that a route that would draw attention right here and now? There's a few guys on the roster, but they don't have a division for it right now. But there, there are a few guys. And maybe it's something to do with Mysterio for his last six or seven months that he has left on the contract. Because I, I think his contract expires in the spring. So that's something that could be a possibility. Now here's something that kind of works against them. They burned their bridge with a bunch of Mexican wrestlers recently. And now AAA is gaining some um, momentum. So how many Mexican stars, especially older established Mexican stars that we know and care about, uh, would want to come back to the WWE just for kind of a, if it's going to be just a a short-lived gimmick of having a cruiserweight division again. I don't know. You could take guys from NXT because there's a lot of smaller guys. I mean, this could be a way to, in, to introduce Adrian Neville to the uh, to the card, and that just kind of popped in my head. Imagine if you had, like, a cruiserweight uh, tournament like they did to introduce the cruiserweight division the first time. Let's say they did that again, and then uh, they have an NXT battle royal to determine the final spot for the... Um, tournament. Adrian Neville wins the tournament. He gets in lowest seed in the tournament and he wins the whole fucking thing and becomes the new, I guess we'll call it the first modern day cruiserweight champion for WWE. Now that could be an interesting, very interesting and strong way to introduce him into the main roster without having to worry about putting him in matches with bigger guys and making him look a little weaker than he probably does. And you don't have to worry about putting him in there with Dolph Ziggler's and guys like this because you have, and I already brought his name up, uh, but you have a guy that you could put in that very same tournament to give Neville the rub, and his name is Rey Mysterio. You would put them both in this tournament at opposite ends of the spectrum. Rey Mysterio, you put him as the number one seed in the tournament because he's fucking Rey Mysterio. Neville's at the bottom. They meet in the finals. Neville beats Ray to become the, the, the first new modern-day cruiserweight champion. And boom, you got a star. You got a friggin' star, and Mysterio has done something of note in the past six years now. My God, when was the last time Ray Mysterio has done anything of fucking value? This is a way to do that. That just popped in my fucking head out of nowhere. But there you go, WWE. Send me a check. Just send me a check. Well, that's it. That's all I got. I've kind of went a little bit longer than I wanted to. But, hey, thanks for sticking with me if you stuck with me this long. So let's go ahead. Make sure you check out my, my, my boy, Jeff Huffman, um, on everything that he does. He's got a YouTube channel. I'll put the link up uh, be, mainly because it's like Grand Slam 87 or something. But I'm forgetful and stupid and fat. Uh <laughs> You can also check him out with our good friend Tommy C. over at Shot From The Point on Shot From The Point Live every Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm also on Shot From The Point channel uh, Monday through Thursday on In The Crease with Tommy C., A Little Morning Ice. Also, you can find me on The Joe Cronin Show on Monday nights and on pay-per-views doing the Raw Review and pay-per-view review as well as Wednesday nights doing monetize this with joe cronin jesse J, tommy c and and whoever else ends up wanting to show up and that's we had a great show this week on monetize this check it out acdc drummer trying to acquire murders <laughs> it was great we had a great time uh and that's all the joe cronin stuff can be found right now on spectrum gaming 617 so make sure you check that out subscribe subscribe here Like, share, let's build something here, guys, because we got something special. I love you. You love me. We are one big family, baby. I'm sorry. But that's I'm going to get out on that because uh, I'm embarrassed and mortified. So other than that, thanks for joining me. I appreciate everything. And we are out of here.